Hey everyone, my name is Trina Bellamide. I'm a singer, songwriter, record producer, and songwriting coach. And if I'm meeting you just for the first time today, do check out my website to get to know me a little better. Today, I have something to share with you, my fellow artists, something that I think is important and could be life-changing if we totally get this point and apply it to our lives. And I am talking about the 80-20 rule. Now, how this came about was I was talking to a friend of mine about the music business and we were just sharing our frustrations and, you know, bitching about the biz and talking about artists who are always frustrated. You have signed artists who feel like the label is not paying them as much attention. You have songwriters who have publishers who don't seem to be doing their jobs and you have independent artists who are struggling to rise above the noise and trying to create some buzz. So I was telling him that I think that record labels and publishers are set up in a certain way and this is what they do because of this and that. And he goes, well, yeah, you know, because of the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. And it's like, the Pareto what? Um, I just, I've not heard about this thing. And so I looked it up, basically what the 80-20 rule says is 80% of the effects are usually brought about by 20% of the causes. So there's 80-20, it's also apparently called the rule of the vital few. Hmm, vital few. And so it got me thinking about the music business and how it's set up if I were a record label. If I have like 50 artists in my roster, only 20% of those artists would be giving me the 80% revenue that I am happy with. And that is something to think about because this would actually explain why record labels tend to focus on their top artists. And this would explain why a lot of artists who are signed to labels tend to feel frustrated sometimes, like they're not being given as much attention as they thought they'd get. Same thing with publishers and songwriters. If you are a songwriter and I was a publisher and you assigned your songs to me, let's say you have a whole catalog of songs and your expectation is for me to market all these songs, you know, make them famous, make them, you know, have artists record them or pitch them everywhere. It would be in my best business interest to have a lot of songs in my catalog because the more songs I have in my account or in my roster, the more goods I have to sell. Now if you sign your songs to me and expect me to do the work of pitching your songs, which is technically what a publisher is really supposed to do, you might be setting yourself up for some disappointment because 20% of my entire roster would actually be responsible for giving me my 80% revenue. And the majority of it, the 80%, would be just, eh, you know, these songs on fringes, songs that I could push for, but why would I waste my time on this 80% when I have 20% that's giving me more money? This 80-20 rule is like a big reality check for me for us artists who tend to, you know, to be really disappointed with how the music business is set up. This is why sometimes it does really make sense to go independent. Unless, of course, you are like the 20% that the label is happy with or that the publishers are happy with, then good for you. But for most of us, it's a huge percentage. The odds of us being in that 20% is 20%. It's a small, um, it's a small uh, possibility. So for most of us, we're really in the 80% that probably doesn't get that much attention from our publishers and record labels. We have our works assigned to them, or we're signed to the label, and we end up still doing the work and not seeing the money. And worse, sometimes they take a cut from our own income. But that is the way it is because record labels and publishers 
just like us, they need to make money, and they will do it in every way that is supported by the law. The 80-20 rule will help us manage our expectations of the record labels and the publishers. But here's the good news. The 80-20 rule, we can also apply that to our lives and make ourselves more productive and push our careers forward. The way to do it is, look, ask yourself, what 20% of your catalog or your works that are out there now are giving you the 80% income or happiness or relevance as an artist? Think about it. There is that 20%, possibly even less, that is giving you most of what you already want. So this 80-20 rule is something that we can use to focus our efforts into making ourselves more productive. It's sort of like working smarter rather than working harder. We do have that 80% other songs and new songs that we need to push, but there will be that 20% that might be staring us in the face and we're like already successful with them and all we need to do is to build on those successful works or that successful revenue source. Maybe it's not recording. Maybe, maybe as an artist, you have better success with your live gigs. So maybe you don't need to be a recording artist that needs to be signed because if you're already doing well as a live artist and you're getting your fans from that 20%, you don't need a recording label life. You don't need to put out your music online. So it's just something that I think we need to think about. This 80-20 rule is something that will help us focus and think out of the box. Maybe give us some creative solutions to our own problems and whatever we want to happen to our music. There's a lot of information about the 80-20 rule and how it helps people become more productive. We can find ways to put our music out there to make ourselves relevant and ultimately to earn from our own works. Now I hope that this video is going to be helpful to you. I hope it inspires you and fires you up and even if maybe it's making you realize some things that are kind of disappointing about you know, big labels and big publishers. Hopefully knowing this 80-20 rule helps you understand where they're coming from, helps you understand what they're thinking, and maybe you'll get to even negotiate with them with a win-win mindset. Like if you know that that 20% is what matters to them, maybe you can find a way to be that 20% so that they can pay more attention to you and you can come up with some win-win situation where everybody's happy. So whether you're dealing with a record label or a publisher or doing things independently, the 80-20 rule is something worth thinking about. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave me some comments below. Let me know what your 20% is and how the 80-20 rule is something that you can apply in your life. Let me know what you think, ask me some questions, and please do consider also subscribing to my channel. I will be making more videos in the future about the music biz and giving creative tips as well. And also do check out my past videos. I will see you all very soon. Bye.